Hi YouTube, so today I decided to talk about the other um, multi-chromatic highlighter palette that Notoriously Morbid just put out. Uh, yesterday I posted a video about uh, the first uh, multi-chromatic palette that they put out called Ghastly Tales. And today I'm going to talk about the one called Ghostly Tales. So the names are very similar, so you know it's very easy to get confused, but um, either palette is um, absolutely stunning. It's like I said in the other one, I have never been so excited for any makeup release ever. So, okay. So today um, I'm gonna be talking about the palette called Ghostly Tales and each of the um, the shades is named after a different spooky story. So I'm gonna tell you about each of the shades, what each of them look like, and then also about the story that inspired them. Okay, so the first color in the palette is called Sarah and it shifts from pink, orange, violet, and green. So um, a lot of color there. Um, it's very exciting. Uh, that's my favorite one. That's the one that I'm actually ordering today. Hopefully they haven't run out yet because I know that she said that they might run out and then they would do a restock. They would do, a, I think that she said they would do two, only two more restocks after they um, initially run out. So I better get on that. But anyway, Sarah is my favorite. That's the one that I'm going to be getting and it is uh, themed or it's uh, based off of the story of Sarah Winchester. For those of you who don't know, um, in California, I and I actually just moved from California just a couple years ago, and I didn't know about the whole Winchester story until I lived out there, and then a lot of people um, at my base would take, like on the weekend, they would go to the Winchester house to do tours, especially around Halloween. So, um, so I looked it up while I was there, and I became so intrigued by it like I would love to buy this house and just live in it because I think it is so neat basically it's this giant house that Sarah Winchester who was the wife I know that she was an heir to like the Winchester fortune Winchester rifles I can't remember if she was the wife or the daughter of the person who invented them but anyway it doesn't matter she got it in her head that um that the um the victims of any winchester rifle would haunt her like, i think it was like she went to like a fortune teller or something like that like somebody put it in her head that basically anybody who had been murdered with a winchester rifle would haunt her in her life and then so she was like how can i keep this from happening and basically it's like this person told her like they it was like she had to make a, like the deal so that she wouldn't be haunted by ghosts was that she would have to build a house and keep on building it so that it would have to be worked on like that, that, that construction could never stop. And then in this house that would contain all of the souls of anybody who had been murdered by a Winchester rifle. To this day, and this was a long time ago, obviously that this started, to this day, there's construction around the clock. I really don't know how they pay for it, but um, yeah, if there's constant construction, even though she died a long time ago, um, it's, it, and there's like, because there's so much construction, people are just like, they, they, they run out of ideas of, you know, things to build in the house. So they, sometimes they build like staircases, the staircases will just go straight up to the ceiling or sometimes they'll just have like, they'll just like, they'll like put a, a door in somewhere and it doesn't open anything behind it is just a wall, you know? And then there's just like a lot of trap doors and all kinds of really cool stuff. You should go and tour it. It's really absolutely amazing. The one thing though is that it is not wheelchair accessible and it is not like, you can't bring any strollers. So if you have like a little child, you're gonna have to carry them the whole time. And also sadly, if you need a wheelchair, then you would not be able to tour it. Um, so yeah, it's it's a very neat tour though, if you're able to do it and it's out in California. Is it San Jose? No, San Diego, where is it? I forget. It's in California. Look it up. It's very, very, very interesting. If I ever got like really rich, I would love to buy that house. That'd be so cool. Okay. So anyway, and then the second color in there, hi Cade. Um, the second color in the palette is called Whaley. Now, um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, um, you know, I'm always kept, I always keep up pretty well with, you know, American lore and ghost stories and that sort of thing. But this one I had never heard about of the Whaley house and wow. it, Maybe I have heard about it at some point, but it didn't stick out to me. It doesn't seem as interesting to me as a lot of other American ghost stories. But apparently the Whaley House, it's also in California, and you can also do tours. 
Um, but it's supposedly the most haunted house in America, which, like I said, it was really odd because how did I not remember that or how have I not come across that? Anyway, there used to be a gallows where people would, you know, be sentenced to death. And then, um, like, after the gallows were torn down, then the house was built on top of it, the Whaley house. Apparently, the Whaleys were were skeptical. Um, they didn't they didn't believe in that sort of thing. Um, they didn't believe in ghosts and stuff like that. So, but once they moved in the house, like everything changed. Like apparently, their the hauntings were so um, just undeniably real that they that they like they left. But yeah, um, quite a few people have actually lived there. People have died there, and you can actually take a tour of it. I tried to see how much it would cost for a tour online, and I wasn't able to come up with anything, though. But, yeah, you can apparently schedule a tour. Um, the third shadow, um, the, shirt, the third highlighter in the box is called Annabelle. And I'm sure you've probably heard of the story of the haunted doll or possessed doll, whatever, named Annabelle. Um, again, this is another one of those Ed and Lorraine Warren stories, and you know how I feel about them. But apparently, um, well, before, before I get into the legend of Annabelle, I should tell you, the colors, um, this is very cool colored. So ice blue, pink, and violet is the shift you're going to get. It's very unique. Um, I really, really love it. I will probably buy that one too eventually. I just can't afford to buy these all at once. Like I want to buy them all, but I can't afford to just get them all right now. Um, I'm about to go through a big move, so I need to be kind of saving up. So, um, But I'll definitely get this one eventually. So this one, um, Annabelle is um, supposedly this possessed rag doll. And it was like, you remember the Raggedy Ann, Raggedy Ann doll? So it was like, back in the 70s, these college students lived together in a house. And one of the chicks that lived there had an Annabelle doll, or a Raggedy Ann doll that she named Annabelle. And apparently they had all seen Annabelle moving. And at one point they even saw Annabelle like crawling, uh, crawling up the body of like a guy that was spending the night or something like that. It was like crawling up his body or something like that. And, um, so the, the Warrens came out, they got the doll and they said it was like so evil and they're so scared of it and everything like that. Or they've got it on display in their museum. I think their museum is in Connecticut, New Haven, Connecticut, I think is the Warren occult museum or whatever. Um, but they've got it like in there in like a glass case, um, and like these prayers around it and stuff like that. But, um, so yeah, you can actually go see the doll for yourself if you're interested. Like I said, personally... Anything to do with the Warrens, I'm very skeptical of. You know, like, I don't mean to sound mean, but, yeah, I, I don't believe in those two. So, um, so, yeah, I don't really believe in the whole Annabelle thing, but the movie sure is interesting. So, um, so yeah, so you can go see that doll in Connecticut if you'd like to, to, to go check it out. Um, they do tours pretty often. And, yeah, all of those are absolutely gorgeous. Um... Oh, I didn't tell you about the Whaley um, highlighter, what colors it is. Oh my gosh, what a dork. Okay, so it's frosty blue, gold, and green. Very interesting. Um, so, you know, a lot of these would be absolutely great for anybody for, like, Halloween costumes. But if you're somebody like me, this is something that, you know, like, for me, I like to have an otherworldly look. I like to look different. I like to look special and 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 unique. So, to me, this would be all year round. I would, look, I would love any of these highlighters. I would go nuts for so, um, so yeah, so that's, uh, all the ones in the Ghostly Tales palette. And if you want to get the entire palette, it is $42.50. There's also another highlighter palette if you want to hear about that and the ghost stories that go along with that. Uh, I have another video that I posted yesterday about that called Ghastly Tales. Or no, I think it's called Multichrome Highlighters Ghostly Tales. Um, so, and if you want, if there's like one or two that you like and you don't want to buy like a whole palette, then the individual pans are $18 and I believe they're a little bit bigger. So, um, that's what I'm doing. Like I said, I'm going to buy Sarah because that one's probably my favorite. Um, so I'm going to buy that tonight and I'll just kind of just keep that name to my collection. Should probably get a Z palette, you know, considering, um, I'm not really exactly sure what I'm going to do with the little, the little pan. Cause I don't think it has a top on it. Yeah. I'll have to figure that out. That's a, I'll cross that bridge when I get there. Oh, and before I go, if you like this look I'm doing right now, I will have the picture on my Instagram. It's just a fun little simple makeup look for, for Halloween or any time that you like to look, you know, have a little bit of spooky glamour. Um, it's like little bat wings for my liner. 
and like I said, I'm not very good at makeup. I don't have a very good steady hand. Uh, my blending is for shit, but you know, it's I'll get better. But anyway, you get the idea. You will probably be able to make this look better than I did, but um, like I said, I'll have the picture on my Instagram. If you want to check out my Instagram, it is Esmeralda Glows. Okay, well, that's it for now. If you liked it, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.